G'day everyone and welcome back to Tom's Rock Farm. The wind has finally gone. Uh, we've got a cloudy day, but uh, it's a calm day for spraying, so Henry's out there spraying now. So it's actually Wednesday today. Uh, yesterday I had the accountant here for half the day and Henry was actually crook. He still is a bit crook. Uh, so there was no spraying yesterday, but he couldn't anyway because it was windy in the morning and then we had showers coming through. It only equated to, I think, not even a mill, but uh, it was enough just to stop from spraying. So nothing was sprayed yesterday, but that's all right. He's uh, heading out there today to spray, so we will fly the drone later on today and go and have a look. But this, the old, the old wildcat pin, we, uh, we decided just to leave it. Um, yeah, we gave uh, Ryan his tool back. Uh, it's, yeah, I'd, there's a, we don't know if there's a bushing in there or not. Uh, so we're just gonna, just gonna leave it for now. Uh, we'll address it next year when we've got time. Um, I don't wanna pull it out now, have it absolutely destroyed <laughs> and then uh, have to, you know, fix it. Um, now I know that in saying that, you know, if I'm leaving it in there and it's destroyed, isn't that just creating a, a, a problem for myself? It probably is, but uh, it's, it's running at the moment and it's working. Um, and with it being so close to harvest, so we're probably about two weeks away from harvesting today. Um, yeah, I just don't wanna have a big giant thing that I need to try and fix and have uh, no parts available because we need to get them made. So we've decided to leave that. Uh, at least the chain's all done. I will get to welding that crack up. I think that's about it. We've got to just check the cameras, make sure they're working. Uh, the Grain King, I need to hook onto the chaser bin and just fire it up because we couldn't do that last time because we didn't have an, um, the gearbox. But I think this will be all ready to roll. But uh, yeah, I might hook this on and fire that up just make sure that this one's all working um, and yeah I did get to uh, to putting some steps on that uh, that new field bin yesterday all I did was just weld two pegs on just like that so that now I can just go like uh, this come up and look into my field bin uh, so yeah that's um that's all sorted it's all greased it's all ready to roll just uh, need harvest to come along and we'll uh yeah we'll pull that bad boy out and uh then we've got to figure out how we're going to put it in our lineup of um field bins and how we sort everything out for uh for loading brian all right we uh we're going to pull the chasers out and get them onto the tractors uh we need to uh run the auger up on the grain king make sure that's all good i think there's a few cracks on there as well we just need to check uh, and then we also need to pull out the um the wildcat and we need to weld that up so uh yeah i mean harvest is maybe a week or two away it's a bit early to start leaving them on there i don't know if i'll leave them on or if i park them away but uh yeah we'll pull them out and um yeah get that sorted uh but at the moment i just gotta duck home quickly to do something in the office and then uh while we're down there we'll swing across to uh henry put the drone up see uh see him do some spraying and then we'll yeah get back up here to work Oh, well, I got uh, that sorted. I was just changing uh, yield estimates for crop insurance, so that's all done. But uh, Henry's on his outside lab there. You guys probably can't see over here somewhere. Um, so he's uh, yeah, he's spraying Roundup out on the uh, the canola there. Now uh, Roundup, it's all on label. It's all allowed uh, to be sprayed onto canola for desiccation. And the reason we do it is to uh, Basically to even all the paddock up and you know help um, you know help dry the crop out essentially. Uh, if we were to let that all mature at um, naturally, uh, we'd end up when we come back to harvest, the parts that are like yellow now that are out there, we yeah they would probably all be uh, shattered by the wind and destroyed. And then the greenery, you know, <laughs> we've done it before. We left one paddock once. And we, uh, yeah, it, it took so long, nearly like the end of harvest before it was all finally fully and evenly matured. So we, uh, 
we use Roundup to, you know, essentially just shut the plant down and then it can all just dry at, a, uh, at an even, even time, which means that, uh, so uh, I'd have to check the label. I think it's uh, either seven days or 14 days before you're allowed to go in and harvest after spraying canola. So after then is when we will, uh, yeah, be harvesting it. So typically canola is uh, about three weeks before you, you, once you spray it till you harvest it. But uh, with how sort of dry the year is at the moment, um, the agronomist's guess is it's most likely gonna be two weeks. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why we're spraying that. And uh, the barley, so I'm walking out in the barley now and you can see it's 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 getting there it's ready to nearly ready to go um so we uh we're gonna spray this with uh reg line or diquat and uh so you can tell the barley's not not ready yet because barley uh where's where's the kid? so this plant these ones here see how they're canking over so that's what barley looks like when it's when it's ready these guys are they're not up straight up anymore they are starting to tilt over um so yeah we're we're gonna hit this because um when the barley does canker over uh that's when we we lose it so a wind event like we what we had uh on monday there when we were doing the wildcats pin we would have come out here and then on the ground here there would have been just heads just on the ground and uh it's devastating when that happens it's you've spent your whole um your whole year getting the crop to this stage and then a wind event kills it uh, so yeah we're going to spray this and then that means that this will be ready sooner and we can get on and harvest it sooner so we can get our full potential of yield so obviously green things like that they're you know they're not going to come to anything anyway so they'll they'll die off um, it's just things in here that we've got to got to wait and see so we get our we get our, our plant our, our our head and we squeeze with our fingernail and if we can't I mean that one there is ready to go I'd harvest that but it's the bottom ones so if we go to a bottom one and give that a squeeze if I can so they're about ready oh dropped it they're about ready to go I'd be able to spray that with diquat today but um, across the paddock it's not so much but yeah And but what I mean by not so much is we've got to just check that across the paddock it's all even uh, at an even stage to to go and spray. Um, yeah, the things that are green aren't going to come to anything, so you got to make that decision of. Uh, so let's just, for instance, where we're standing here, it's green here. I spray that on Friday. This greenery, it's not going to come to anything. It'll be shriveled up, tiny seed. So. Uh, I gotta weigh it up. Do I lose maybe 10% of the yield across the paddock because I'm not gonna get these green bits? And uh, that means I can get on and harvest it earlier, make sure I can get this whole paddock harvested in. Uh, or do you leave it, let it mature naturally, possibly have that wind event that, um, you know, then you could lose, instead of only losing 10%, you know, you could lose, um, you know, 20, 30, 40%. So, yeah, it's. So we're going to weigh up.
you can see from the sky that uh, most of the paddock has turned, you know, yellow or orange. So uh, yeah, it's a good timing to be out there. Uh, so we're going to get up and we're going to hook onto that chase bin and we're going to give it a run up. There's another job that we need to do to this tractor that I forgot. And that's remove the weights. Henry's out spraying. Oh, am I going to have some fun doing that or do I wait until next week? <laughs> We shall find out, shall we? Right, let's get this fired up. I've also got to remove all these screens out because we don't, you know, we don't need them in here. Come, uh, come harvest, and need to put the AgriTrack screen in. I tell you what, that looks pretty good to me. <laughs> so there is a uh, one thing we're going to do. We need to replace this fitting up here. This is our um, like hydraulic return line, our bleed off line, if you will. Um, so this up here is buggered. This fitting. Uh, so I think uh, the part for it is in town. So hopefully we can get that. Um, but yeah, other than that, everything should be all good. So there are differences between the Wildcat and the Grain King, but the, the biggest one uh, is the Grain King is a hydraulic uh, cross auger and the um, Wildcat isn't. So. The Grain King, you've got um, one set of hydraulics folds the auger out, the other set of hydraulics runs the, the, the floor auger, the, we call it the cross auger, uh, and the PDO runs the main auger. Now, I prefer this system, it's a lot easier uh, when you um, are, say, loading a truck or getting a fill bin full or something like that, all you need to do is just turn your uh, cross auger off and then just it doesn't take very long to run this all right and then you can turn you know the PD off which turns that one off the wildcat is a choke system so the wildcat uh the pdo as you would have seen in the last video when we we're doing the chain it drives uh the the gearbox down here which drives the auger and it also drives it uh drives direct drives the uh the cross auger now um, that's all well and good for power wise going off a tractor, but you've got a choke system. So the choke system, uh, if you can see in there, probably can't. What that does, the choke, is it lifts the, um, it lifts the, uh, the cover above the auger up and down. So you're regulating your choke off the, off the numbers up there. And if you open it too far, uh, you'll block the auger because it's too much grain, especially on wheat. Wheat's very heavy. You'll block it and then you've got a disastrous um, time to try and fix it. Uh, and yeah, look, it, it's, it is a, it, I like the, I like the chaser bin, but I'd much rather have my, uh, my sweep auger, my cross auger separate. Um, yeah, we've, we've definitely come into some issues with having it all running off the same system. Uh, but uh, yeah, we just, we, we used to, back in the day, swap drivers around on different chasers because we had different size tractors, you know, make sure it was fair for everybody. But now it's that chaser's that person, that chaser's the other person because they're two different systems. Once you're used to one um, and you go to the other, yeah, it gets quite confusing. Right, let's get this bad boy out of the shed. I've got my cameras hooked up, so if I reverse, there we go. And while we're here, we'll check our light as well. So that's working out the back there, if you can see on the tip of the auger. So we have that for come night time uh, unloading. It's a lot easier if you've got a light up on top of the auger. Looking straight down, you can see your grain a lot better. And uh, just on the, net, well, on the uh, upside of that light, there's the camera for the PDO, which we'll get uh, going in a second when I've uh, Folded the auger out. So 
so I need to slow that down but I'm just going slow I stopped it because I just want to make sure that the auger is going to be okay because we did just change the auger well changed it the other day the other week all right all right I've got the window open just so I can hear anything we're just going to fire the PDO up and just um, yeah see what it sounds like camera on and uh, unfortunately that sound you're hearing that's what our PDO sounds like on this thing. So uh, changing our gearbox unfortunately didn't um, fix anything but I do just need to work out which way the uh, cross auger goes though because if you've got it going the wrong way then obviously when you go to uh, turn it on then it's gonna you know you'll be pushing the grain backwards instead of forwards so I've got to figure that out but uh, other than that it seems alright so cameras work lights work PDO is all good now I'm just gonna go around the whole thing and just check for cracks so as you can probably tell as you look across this thing we've welded it up for quite a few times um, for instance there's one there there's quite a lot up around there in here um, each one of those has been welded up. All underneath the undercarriage has also been welded up. Um, so I've got written down in the book that we need to weld up some cracks, but uh, I need to find the cracks. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, obviously when we were cleaning this up at the end of last, last year, we um, must have spotted some cracks. So yeah, I'm just gonna have a quick walk around I can see one right now. So we've got here, there's a crack going all along there. And as I've got my head down, there is also a crack along here that goes underneath. Ow. And that's the sound of my head hitting a ladder. Um, so I've got those two to weld up. Uh, I'll just keep having a look around and See if I can spy any more cracks. What we um, we have done in the past uh, won't work with those ones there, but um, if you see here, you know there's a crack there, and uh, there's yeah, this is all cracked as well. But it's it gets very hard to to fix and weld. So what we ended up doing is just drilling a hole in the end of the crack, and it stops it. The crack won't keep growing, um, and that actually works really well. But uh, yeah, so one problem about Grain Kings is uh, they're a fixed frame and they are absolutely horrible. They crack like you wouldn't believe, which uh, you can tell they know it because they're now called Nirex and the Nirexes are all bolt together. So they uh, bolt together and they've got different steel because at least with that you've got some movement as you are when you drive across the paddock. But when there's no movement in a rigid frame like this, everything just cracks. You know, we've got patch after patch after patch after patch. It's, uh, yeah, not ideal, but I'll get those two welded up. I'll keep looking around and then we'll pull that out and uh, weld that big crack up on that. So what I've done with uh, this one, I can't really cut into it because it's going to go through this very thin steel that, um, yeah, so I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to weld up that crack. This one down here, I have uh, cut into the crack as much as I can with the grinder in this awkward spot and I'll try and fill it up. Right, well, that's done. It's um, not the uh, best of jobs. I know that um, it's probably gonna crack. Could crack uh, in a month, could crack in a couple of years, but uh, yeah, that'll do for now. Uh, so, the last thing for this, before this is ready to go, uh, I need to get these weights off, and we actually do need to do uh, oil and a fuel filter change on art, and then that's all good. 
Um, and maybe just run the pressure cleaner over it just so it's all nice and shiny and pretty for the beginning of uh, beginning of uh, harvest. So I think the most annoying thing is, is you take off the, the bolt, sorry, the nut on the small side and uh, then you got to pull it out. Isn't that just classic gag? And it's, uh, the rod is there, so I can't physically get it out any further. So now I've got to get those nuts off and pull it out the other way. At least I know for the next one, but this next one I hope the thread is uh, all right and I can unscrew the nut by hand instead of having to do it with a spanner the whole time. For anyone wondering, each one of these suitcase weights is 47 kilos. Now the other side. Right, that's all done. So I'll park these away and uh, that'll be the last time we put weights onto, onto art because I think it's about January, somewhere around then is when uh, we swap art for the case, for the road track. So uh, yeah, we won't need to weight it again, which is um, these weights here, uh, the, the greener of the lot, uh, they actually came off of the ute. So we could put them back on if uh, if we so require and then have the others for spare for, for something, but yeah. Also the other day we had all our uh, grain bags get delivered. So that's these bad boys right here. So uh, yeah, we've got a nine foot, um, nine foot uh, bagger. Uh, some people have uh, 10 feet ones, so they get, you know, more capacity. And we tend to go for the 75 meter bags because uh, they're just, a little bit lighter to manhandle around onto utes and then get onto um onto the machine itself so down here we uh we ended up getting 600 meter bags last year because we were running out well we ran out of bags they are massive they're massive and they're heavy so uh yeah these are what we stick to i think we work on about maybe 180 ton of barley fits in these and sort of around that 220 to 240 of uh, wheat, just depending on your hectolitre weight. But um, yeah, no, they're, they're a useful tool. I've got 25, I've got 27, uh, including the 200s from last year. We will not use that many this year, but uh, yeah, we've got them on hand though. Last thing to do in here, well, let's sort of do oil change and fuel, fuel to change, but that's uh, a next week job. But we need to uh, take off all these units because we don't need them for uh, for harvest, and they just get in the way. You know, you, you need to you unload on your right hand side, so you're looking out, you know, at the truck or at the fill bin or at somebody on that side. So it's just a lot easier, safer if we uh, remove these, and then you've got a clearer window. It's definitely not clear, but yeah, it's clearer. Well, to finish the video off, I um. I'm going to be parking this up with it all still attached. So I figured why not just uh, do a drive over our new, uh, our new field bin there. Now we'll see how close I'll uh, be, be able to get because I uh, might end up going into the, you know, the, the little creek bit that we got at the end there. But I figured uh, we'll just have a little drive over and see how the auger looks. 
see what sort of uh, range we're going to get. We'll be able to fill the middle of the bin or not. Well, I, uh, I'm in the creek. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, I obviously need to come a lot further over. I'd be able to fill it from there, but I think that's pretty good. We'll be able to uh, get a decent pile in there to you know, try and fill it to its uh, full capacity. With the, um, with the Grain King, uh, you can't get as, the field bins as full as what you can with the Wildcat. The Wildcat's got a much longer auger. It's also got a spout that you can tilt, which is really handy. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I reckon we're gonna leave it there, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I know we're all very excited for harvest. So uh, yeah, it's only gonna be another week possibly and you know, we might be into it. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.